my name is Vera um, and I am representing International Health Sydney today um, to give you this training and also program updates. Um, so first of all, I'd like to um, give you some basic uh, background about International Health. Um, so first of all, International Health is actually a very um, international, it, it's an international brand and um, they have campuses all over, uh, I think over 60 countries. Um, so they have the international health colleges in over 60 countries, but um, it runs in the a format of franchise. So um, although there are many colleges named international health, but they all belong to different people. Um, so for us, um, our college, we have, at the moment, we have four campuses. So we have the Sydney City campus. Um, we have the Bondi Junction, also in Sydney campus. And then we have Darwin and we have Melbourne campuses at the moment. Um, but from next year, um, January 2021, onwards, we will have two new campuses in Gold Coast and Byron Bay. So Byron Bay is also a small town um, in New South Wales, very close to Sydney. Yep, so then from next year, we'll have Sydney City, Bondi Junction, Darwin, Melbourne, Gold Coast and Byron Bay. Okay, so that's just a bit, um, bit of background information on our college. Um, and now I will start um, giving you some information about our programs. So today um, there will be, you know, quite a few programs that I will have to inform you of, um, but mainly they, um, I can probably divide them into uh, three sectors. So we have the um, early course for young students, for under 18 students. So that will be high school preparation program, primary school preparation program, AES preparation courses, um, junior holiday programs and study tools. So these are all for under 18 students. And also we have um, early course, so English courses for over 18 students. So we have the general English speaking and pronunciation, um, speaking and pronunciation, IELTS EAP, um, yeah, so all of these are just very general adults English training programs. And then um, the second, uh, second type of uh, programs we have is our teacher training courses. So teacher training courses are basically for students who want to become English teachers. So uh, we have the CELTA course which is a globally recognized certificate. And if a student um, gets a, has a CELTA certification, that means he or she can go to anywhere in the world to teach English to adult students. Um, we also have certificate four in TESOL course. So if a student wants to become an English teacher um, in Australia, then they can probably just take this course because it is recognized by pretty much all universities and colleges and um, language schools like us. Um, and if a student has this certification, they can teach English to adults in pretty much all institutions in Australia. Uh, we also have English for teaching young learners. So basically, if a student wants to become an English teacher for teaching young kids, then they can take this course as well. Um, and also, last but not least, we have vocational courses in our International House Business College. So we do offer Certificate 3, uh, Certificate 4 and Diploma to Advanced Diploma courses in around uh, mainly four streams. So I'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, so now I, I will just move on to our junior early course, junior English courses first. And then um, if you have any questions, please be welcome. Please feel free to um, 
and ask a question in the chat um, thing, in the chat function. Okay, first of all, um, high school preparation program, um, it is basically an English program for students from 12 to 17 years old. And the purpose, the original purpose of this program is to prepare students for going into an Australian high school. So most of the students who are taking this course is because they are planning or they have already applied, they have already applied for a high school in Australia. And we work with mainly private schools in, New uh, in Australia. So the government schools will have their own Elicos center, but private schools is basically what we are um, packaging with, what we have partnerships with. Um, so this is a course that's, um, a, this is a full-time English course running from Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So this is a full-time um, English course that runs during school hours. It's not a tutoring course. So it's not something that students can, um, can attend after school, okay? So, um, and we have no school holidays. Students can start from any Mondays throughout the year. The only holiday we have is the Christmas holiday at the end of the year, and it, it is only for two weeks. So any other times, students can start in the programs. And um, the minimum duration of the course is one week. So, so students can apply for just uh, from one to uh, probably 50 weeks. Right? Depends on how long the students need to study with us. So it, it is a very flexible course. Um, and then upon uh, place, so when the student is about to start with us, we'll ask the student to take a placement test and we will allocate the student into class according to their um, English level, which is reflected from their placement test result. And every month, while the student is studying with us, we will have a monthly test to test on the student's progress throughout the month. And after the test, we'll have a monthly report generated. And this report will go towards the student's packaged high school. Um, so they are aware of the student's progress and they, they can decide whether the student can um, commence main course on time or do they need to extend for a longer language preparation. Um, this is just a sample timetable of our high school preparation program. Um, you don't really have to know this, but sometimes parents might ask for it. So if you need those um, documentation, you can probably just contact uh, Mike and he will have all the resources and information for you. Um, also, we have a primary school preparation program that is exactly the same as our high school preparation, except it is um, aimed for students from eight to 12 years old. So basically students who are applying for a primary school in Australia, probably from year three to year six. Um, for any students younger than this age, um, if they want to apply for primary school, then um, they don't really need language preparation because most of the times schools won't really have an English requirement for students at very young age. Now, um, so again, this is a full-time English course running from Monday to Friday, 9 to 3 p.m. Sydney time. Um, and it's also um, from one week minimum to 52 weeks. Um, both our high school preparation program and primary school preparation programs are offered online at the moment. Uh, but normally, if it, it is not for COVID, we only offer face-to-face. -face. 
Now, for these two programs, although they are aimed for students who are going into a school in Australia, but because um, they're very flexible, because they can accept students from any Mondays throughout the year, and students can apply for a very short uh, amount of time, uh, they can apply for just from one week and onwards. Um, so they can also be offered to students who are just coming to Australia for a holiday. Um, so if they are having a school holiday and they just come, they want to come to Australia for a few weeks and they just want to have some English, um, they want to learn some English, you can also suggest these two programs for them. And again, this is a sample, sample timetable for um, primary school preparation. Um, and if you need this information, please ask, please contact Mike. And um, how are we different? So basically, um, we are one of the first um, schools to have these um, primary to high school aged Eng um, English programs. Um, so we have a very good reputation amongst private schools in Australia uh, and most of the very prestigious schools in New South Wales do acknowledge our reports very well. Um, so we work with, uh, we, we have a list of our partner schools that we work with and this can also be shared with you um, if you can just contact Mike, okay? Um, so if your students um, does or does not have a packaged high school or primary school yet, uh, we can also provide some assistance in help, um, getting an offer for your students. So this can be done. So if you need help in that, please contact us as well. Um, so this list will later be shared with you. All right. Um, so you might also get some questions from your families, such as um, how long do students need to study with us in the language preparation before they commence main course? Um, so in order to answer that question, we need to know what, what's the current English level of the student and also uh, what is the re entry requirement of the student who wishes to, um, who, of the school which the student wishes to apply for. Um, so the difference between the current English level of the student and also the entry requirement of the school that um, he or she wishes to apply for uh, will, de uh, will decide uh, which, sorry, the will, will decide um, the duration of the student's language preparation, okay? So if the student is at very low English level at the moment and he needs to apply, uh, he needs to achieve a very high English requirement for entering the school, then the duration can be pretty long. So it mostly varies from six weeks up to probably 40 to even 50 weeks, okay? Um, and also, um, because I do a lot of direct inquiries with families as well, um, so from my past experience, I have actually summarized um, the different types of students and inquiries into three main scenarios. Um, so I will talk about them now. Um, the first scenario is when a student, um, whether he or she is onshore or offshore, um, they've got a very good AES report already. Okay, so the student's English level is pretty good to, it's good enough to get a conditional offer from a private school. So in this case, it's pretty simple. We just need to collect the application documents from the student, which include passport copy, birth certificate, academic transcript for the past two years at least, an AAS report, 
we all actually, by the way, we all know what an AEAS report is, right? So basically an AEAS, um, report, an AEAS test is something similar to an IELTS test, but for um, primary to secondary students only. Okay, so it's like an IELTS, but for younger students. And when um, you apply for the very good schools, the very good private schools in Australia, they will normally require you to submit an AEAS report up upon application. So when you apply for the school and want to get an offer from them, you will have to provide this report. But not all private schools would require this AEAS score. Okay, only, um, most of the schools do, but there are still a few of them don't require the AEAS report. Hmm. All right, and also um, apart from the AES report, um, if the student has any talents um, or is especially good at something and there's a competition awards, um, then please provide that as well with its translation, with an official translation. Um, so normally if you don't want to um, waste money and time, I will collect all of these um, documentation first, but not the application form to the school. So just all of those forms, and then we can ask, ask the schools whether they are interested in this student and whether they can offer a con, um, issue a conditional offer to this student with all this information. And if they say yes, then we can then officially submit the application form. To proceed. Um, now, once the school has received everything, including the application form, then they can issue a conditional offer. Um, then, w uh, according to what the school requires or what is recommended on the AEAS report, um, then International House can also issue a packaged language school offer for you to apply for student visa. So you take the high school's conditional offer or the primary or the high school's conditional offer with our language school offer and also COEs, then you apply for student visa. Once the student gets a student visa, then the student can come to us commence in our primary school or high school preparation course. And um, there will be a monthly report sent to its high school um, then the school will decide whether the student, uh, when the student can start main course, um, depending on it uh, on the student's monthly reports. Okay. Now, um, also, if you can um, just let the parents know when you do your initial consultation that if a high school requires the student to complete the language, uh, complete a 12 weeks or 16 weeks of language course. What they mean is the student, um, they think the student can reach their entry requirement within 12 to 16 weeks of language preparation. Okay, so the emphasis is on reaching the high school's entry requirement rather than the, either it's 12 or 16 weeks of the language course. So um, if the student does very well um, in doing the language preparation course and they actually do, do reach the high school's requirement within the recommended weeks, then that's great. But if they do not reach the high school's entry requirement within the recommended weeks, the schools might re require them to extend their language course. So this is, um, this is possible and it happens a lot actually. So you really have to remind the parents about this before um, I think, you know, the, early, the earlier the better because um, they need, if they are informed in advance, then they can totally understand it. But if they are only informed after the schools require the students to extend the language course, and this is when they start, um, you know, giving you troubles. 
they will probably say, why didn't you tell me this earlier? Okay. And um, some of the very good pr um, private schools, um, you know, the, if a student has a very good AES score, then they might want to apply for these schools. Um, so I'll give you some examples. And then once you have this uh, partner school list, you will have a better idea of it. So some of um, the school's examples include um, Knox Grammar School, which is a boys school um, located in North Sydney. Um, and they accept international students from year seven to year 11. And then we have Ravenswood, uh, which is a girls school in um, North Sydney as well. And they accept international students from primary school to year 11. And also St. Catherine School, it's um, located in the eastern suburbs of Sydney and um, it accepts international students from primary school to year 11 as well. The Scots College, it's a boys school um, in the eastern suburbs and um, it accepts students, international students from primary school to year 11 as well. And uh, we have Masada College, which is a co-ed Jewish school located in the um, north suburbs, northern suburbs of Sydney, and it accepts international students from primary school to year 11. And Kankapu Rose Bay, we, it's a girls school in the eastern suburbs and accepts international stu students from year seven to year 11. And we have Winona, which is located in North Sydney, and um, they accept international students from primary to year 11 as well, okay? All right, um, and then we have um, the second scenario, which is um, when a student um, has very low English levels, but they are pretty happy to apply for a private school that doesn't require AES or has very low entry requirements. Now, I really have to um, mention this to you. So those schools that um, don't require AES or they have very low entry requirements, it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, that they're not good. They can still be very good schools, but the reason for them to have lower entry requirements is probably because they have um, more ESL support within the school to help students achieve, um, you know, to achieve, to make good achievements, even if when they, uh, even if they have very low English levels when they go into the schools. Okay, so that can be one of the reasons. And the other reasons can be, um, they might be located pretty far away from the uh, central Sydney. So location wise, they're not very ideal. So in order to get the students that they want, they probably have to lower their other standards a little bit. Okay, just to, um, to give it a balance. So there can be many factors Influence, influencing a student's, um, a school's policy on their entry requirements for interna international students. So um, please um, let your parents know as well, you know, if they go for those schools with lower entry requirements, um, doesn't mean that they're not good. Now for this type of students, it's also easy because um, they're not requiring schools with very high requirements. So um, you just have to collect the same application documents as before, um, passport copy, birth certificate, academic transcripts for the past two years at least, talents or competition awards. Um, and also because they don't have an AAS re report this time, so um, in order to know what English levels they're at, IH Sydney can offer them a free placement test to test what their English levels are like. And we will give our uh, approximate, uh, approximation of um, the duration of their English course required. 
okay? And once I have all of this um, information, then we can contact the schools and ask them whether they are willing to issue a conditional offer to this student. If this student um, can, is an, an ideal student for that school, then they can um, issue the conditional offer with the COE plus um, our IH offer in COE, and then you can apply for student visa for this student. Again, the student gets the visa, they come to us for language study, um, and then we will send the monthly reports to the schools. Um, and then they can decide when the student can commence their main, mainstream class on time. Okay. Okay, sorry, um, I have a question here saying that um, I do not see the requirements for guardians. Could you please let us know? Okay, the, the guardians. Sure, I will get to that point later, very short, uh, very soon. Okay, just bear with me. Okay, um, so schools um, that do not require AAS or has, have very low requirements, um, I'll give you some examples here. Uh, so we have St. Paul's Grammar School. So this is a very good IB school that accepts um, international students from primary, from kindergarten okay, to year 11. This is a co-ed homestay school. Um, the reason for them be, uh, lowering their requirements is probably because of their location. So they are located one hour away from Sydney city. So it's actually not very far. It's pretty, um, it, it's just a, a, a little bit longer than average traveling distance, but still it's a good, it's a very good IB school. Um, and also St. Augustine's is a boys, uh, boys school located in the northern part of Sydney. Um, they accept students from year seven to year 11, uh, sorry, to year 10, okay? And then, so the latest entry point will be year 10. Um, and also Samarins College, it's a co-ed school located, located in, in the West Sydney. Um, and they accept students from primary school to year 11. Um, and then we have Salamaris. So this is a girls school in North Sydney. Um, they accept students from year seven to year 11. But they do require, they don't require AAS for year seven to year 10 entries, but they do, ex uh, they do require an AAS 65 for entering into year 11. Um, also, St. Scholastic, St. Scholasticus College. So this is a girls' college in Glebe, which is in the in the city of Sydney. Um, they accept international students from year seven to year eleven, and they're also a boarding school. They accept students for both both boarding or homestay. And um, as you probably have noticed already, that um, in New South Wales at the moment, uh, we have more single sex schools than co-ed schools. Sometimes you might get asked this question um, from a parent. They will ask you, um, I don't know whether, you know, co-ed schools are better or single sex schools are better. I don't know which school is more suitable for my kid. Well, the answer to that question um, if it's me, I will probably say, you know, it's your personal choice. You know your kids better. Um, so, you know, it's not up to me to recommend which, you know, whether co-ed or single sex schools are better. However, I will provide some facts about New South Wales schools and then let them to decide themselves. Um, so basically from the HSC rankings, from the academic performance of our schools in New South Wales, I will probably say single sex schools generally have better performance than co-ed schools. So um, from the tables on the PowerPoint, 
um, that you can see now. Um, on the left, um, this is the list of the top 10 government schools in the 2019 HEC ranking. So the ones that are highlighted are single sex schools. And um, the blue colors are boys school and pink colors are girls school. So in the government's top 10 list, you can see out of 10 schools, six schools are single sex schools. And for our 2019 HSE ranking top 10 private schools list, you can see out of the 10 schools, we have nine schools that are all single sex schools. And out of the nine single sex schools, seven of them are girls school and two of them are boys school. So yes, we have more girls schools than boys schools, more single sex schools than co-ed schools to choose from basically. Um, and the very last um, type of student, which is the most difficult to deal with, is basically students who have very low English requirement. Uh, they have very low English levels, um, but the parents or the students still want to apply for a very good school that has high requirements, okay? So this is very hard to deal with. The only advice I can give to them is they have to continue um, improve on their English until they get a better mark in the AES report. Um, so basically, they can either study English from offshore, okay, um, from their local tutoring center, cramming school or whatever, or they can also apply for an early course student visa. So they can come to International House first and study with us until they make some progression. Right, and while they are studying with us in our primary school or high school preparation program, they can even also do an AEAS preparation course. So, which is um, preparing them for the AEAS test. So, I will talk about that straight after this as well. Um, so, um, once they make some progress with us in international house, um, then we can probably help them to uh, apply for a school in New South Wales uh, with the application documents that I talked about before. Okay, um, the only thing extra on top of the um, documentation is the, A, uh, the international house monthly reports that we can also um, accumulate and send to the schools when they apply. This is also a very good reference for the schools um, because remember, they like our reports a lot, okay? All right, um, so if a school agrees to issue a, an offer, so a conditional or unconditional offer for the student, then we can apply for student visa for the student directly from onshore uh, if they're already here in Sydney, we can apply for a student visa from onshore. Um, and then they can continue to study our program until they reach the, di um, the direct entry requirement of the school. Okay. Right, um, so this is the AEAS preparation course that, we, um, that I just mentioned. Um, there are two types of AEAS courses and please note that International House is the only official partner school with AEAS in New South Wales. So we are the only um, college that offers these official programs in New South Wales. And this information can be found on the AEAS Australian website as well. Now, there are two AEAS courses um, that the students can do. So here is the AAS Studying Australian Schools Preparation Course. Um, so I call it SPC. And also we have the AAS Test Preparation Course. I call it TPC. Now the first course is a 42 hours course. Um, and it is mostly targeting at students at lower English levels. So if the students have lower English levels, I will recommend them to start from this course first. 
And then once the student reaches a higher English level, then they can do the TPC course, the test preparation course, which is a 30 hours course. Um, that's giving, that's aiming to give students a boost before they take the test. So these two are both test preparation courses for students, but one is for lower level students and the other ones for higher level students. For the lower level students, they can do the SPC course first, then plus a TPC course to um, give them an ultra boost to their marks, okay? And currently these two courses due to COVID are both offered face-to-face -face or online, one-to-one. -one. Okay, the first one is $4,500 and the second one is $4,000. So the longer one, 42 hours is 4,500, uh, 4,500. And the 30 hours one is $4,000. Okay, and nothing, no extra cost on top of that. All right, now um, here comes to the guardianship questions. Um, so usually for underage students, um, if they want to apply for a student visa, they either have to come uh, with the parents on guardian visa, right? So parents, if they are um, happy to come along, then they will have to apply for a guardian visa. If the parents are not coming on a guardian visa and the students do not have a legal guardian in Australia, then um, the course provider, so which is International House, and also uh, the students' primary or high schools later on, uh, no, for primary students, guard, um, parents will have to come on guardian visa. So for students aged 12 years old and under, parents will have to come on guardian visa. So um, for students who are 12 years old and above, then um, the course provider is obligated to provide a CAAW for the student. Now, there are two conditions, the two, um, under two conditions that we can issue the CAAW from IH. One is the student stay with one of our home states. So we can arrange a homestay for the student and then we'll issue a CAW, simple. The second condition is that if a student um, has a family friend or a relative in Australia who is willing to take care of the student, so the student will have to live with that family, okay? We can do a parent nominated guardian procedure. So that means we will send someone to inspect the family to make sure this is an eligible family that student can stay with. Um, and then if we think this is okay, then we can issue a CAW. So we call that parent nomination. So either homestay or parent nomination, then we can issue CAW. Okay, are we clear? All right. Oops. All right, um, about accommodation, um, if a student is staying with our homestay, sometimes you will get asked about um, these questions um, from parents mainly. Sometimes they will ask, uh, how do we ensure the student's safety if they stay with our homestay families? So first of all, all of our homestay families, they will have to have a working with children check for all members who are over 18 years old in that family. So basically working with children check is something that they have to do with the government um, and the government will actually do uh, a check on these people on their um, criminal records or any other uh, history uh, and then make sure this is a safe person to stay with. Um, also, we will have a 24 hours emergency contact um, and with the families. So if there's, and also with the students. So if there's anything 
um, happening to the student, they can get in touch with someone immediately. Um, and then we also do timely, timely communication uh, with our students and also with our homestay family to make sure everything is going okay. If there's any issues, um, just let us know and we can try to fix it um, as soon as possible. Or if we can't fix it, then we'll try to replace the student in a different homestay. Um, and also the traveling distance, the average traveling distance between homestay to the school is normally about 40 to 60 minutes from door to door. Okay, now this sounds a bit long to some families, but it is actually um, quite usual for people who live in the city, who live in Sydney. Okay, because Sydney is a very spread out city. It's a very big city. Um, so it generally takes a, pe a person um, about 40 to 40 minutes to one hour to travel. Okay. Um, and also if the student has any special request for their homestay, they can always let us know when they apply. And we will try to match to their uh, requests as much as possible, right? We'll do our best, but it is not guaranteed that all of the requests will be met. Um, also, we do have junior holiday program and study tours. Now, um, I don't know whether you want me to talk about it right now, um, since the borders are all closed, but just letting you know that we do offer holiday programs for students under 18. Now, um, junior holiday program is actually aimed for students who are applying as individuals. So it is um, the format, both of the, the format of both of these programs are um, English lessons in the morning and then activities in the afternoon. So um, if a student wants to apply um, individually, so it, it's just one student when I say individual, um, then they can apply for junior holiday program. We run the uh, in January to February, July to August, and also March to April as well throughout the year, so three times. Um, and the student can apply for one to five weeks within these windows. And there are fixed schedules, fixed prices. So it's, it, the program will be there for students to sign up for, even if there's, a, it, even if there's just one student. The study tour is in a very similar format the only difference is that um, you will have to uh, have a group of students who want to uh, take this course um, and then we will do a customized um, program for your group and depending on your needs. So if you say I want this and this and this that uh, activities included in my itinerary, then we can do so. Right, so everything will be customized to your needs. Um, we need usually at least eight to 10 students in one study group, okay? So um, if you need further information on this, please just contact Mike. Uh, I won't go into too much details about it right now. All right, now comes our um, adults early course programs. So we have general English and um, EAP programs. So English for academic purposes programs, okay? Like all other colleges do. Um, the prices we have, um, I have listed them here. So at the moment we are offering um, for your market, um, the 23 hours per week course is $260 per week. Um, but for 20 hours per week, we have um, in, in the Sydney city, the price is $230. But for our other campuses, the price is $195 per week. Okay, um, so these programs we're running face to face and online because our Melbourne campus is still offering online courses. So if you have any students want to um, do the course right now online, we can offer that as well. Right. 
Um, we also do offer speaking and pronunciation, right? This is um, actually a lot of students do need this because um, I can I can see that a lot of our um, Southeast Asia or Asian students they have trouble pronouncing. Um, they have trouble with the pronunciation, okay? Um, and sometimes it is a very common, uh, there's a very common pattern about their pronunciation that we can fix. So um, there are students who need this, they can apply for it. Uh, the price is similar to, our, it, it's the same to our general English course. And also our English for academic programs. So we do work with, uh, a lot of colleges and universities, right? Also TAFE uh, for our EAP program. So we work with Torrance University, uh, University of Wollongong, Southern Cross. Um, so there's heaps of schools. Um, I, I can provide you with the pathway school list later on as well. So just please contact Mike as well. <laughs> All right, um, so the prices are also the same as our general English program. Um, the intensive is $260 per week, semi-intensive, so that's 20 hours, that's $230 per week for city campus, $195 per week for our, all other campuses. So all other campuses, including Bondi Junction, Melbourne, Darwin, Gold Coast, and also Byron Bay, all right? Now, um, we also have the teacher training courses. The, the, um, that I mentioned, briefly mentioned at the beginning. Um, so for CELTA, now this is very rare to um, international students because it does have a rare, very high requirement for um, uh, entry requirement for students. It requires a student to have an IELTS score of 7.5 or equivalent to do this course. It, it, it is very hard because, um, uh, but because it is a course and a certificate issued by the Cambridge University. So um, it has to be up to a very certain standard. Um, and the course itself is only four weeks full time. So it's a very short course. And the price is also listed here. So 3,295. Uh, plus the $250 certification fee, or uh, for our Bondi Junction campus, it's cheaper, $2,795, okay? So I'm just gonna um, leave the prices here for your reference. Um, all right, and then there's a certificate for in TESOL. Now this is a more popular course uh, in our international market. Uh, than CELTA because it has lower entry requirement. It requires the student to have only upper intermediate level English in order to do the course. And once the student completes a course, um, they will achieve a TESOL qualification and um, they can teach English to adults in Australia, anywhere in Australia, okay? Um, the course duration is 14 weeks and um, students can start in, um, every four weeks. Um, and please note uh, that this course is for teaching English to adults. If you want to also be able to teach English to young kids aged from four to 12 years old, you can also do a, uh, the due course on English for teaching young learners. Now, this course on its own is four weeks, okay? Full time, 20 hours per week, four weeks. Um, and the entry requirement is intermediate level only. But if you add on to your certificate for in TESOL course, you only have to do an extra two weeks. And the course is only costing you about uh, 200 extra. 
if you're doing a certificate for in TESOL plus the ETYL. So the certificate for in TESOL is $3,150, but if you want to add the ETYL course to it, it's only $3,350. But the ETYL course itself is actually $1,250, okay? So it will save you time and money if you do the dual course package. All right, last but not least, um, the IHBC, International House Business School, Business College, uh, we offer vocational courses. Um, we offer our courses in mainly four streams. So we have the marketing and communication, project management, business, and leadership and management. So under these four streams. Now business, under the business stream is the only stream that we actually do offer a certificate free in business course. So students, um, they only have to have a year 10 certificate or equivalent in order to do this course. Okay, but they have to, they have to be over 18 though. And for this stream, the longest visa they can get is three and a half year because the certificate of three in business is a half year course, but all of the other courses are one year course. Okay. Now, all of our, um, basically all of our courses, apart from the certificate of three course, are one year course. Um, and we have six terms in one year. Every term is six weeks plus two weeks of holiday, right? So um, one year is six terms. Um, also, I want, I'd like to mention that our Diploma of Social Media Marketing course, um, it has a 12 weeks of social media work placement included. And the conversion rate of this work placement is actually very high. So the rate of the student um, getting an actual work offer from the company that they did their work placement at is very high. It's about 70% to 80%, okay? So this is um, something that you can sell to your student. And here are the prices of our uh, VET courses. Now, um, most of our, the, the price range of our uh, course courses are from 1,000 to 1,100 per term. So basically it's about 6,000 to 660, uh, to 60, $6,600 per year. Um, the only course that's a bit more expensive is our social media marketing course, which is the one that's got the work placement. Um, that's $1,200 per term. And um, they'll give you, uh, they'll, they'll give you $7,200 per year. Okay, so that's the only course that's a little bit more expensive. Um, now, for next year, um, we actually do have a promotion for our January to March intakes. Oh, by the way, um, so for our business courses, um, the intake dates is um, every, it, like students can basically start from any term. Um, so the intake dates is from January to March and May, July, September and November. Okay. And um, I'll have the, the very exact dates for you on the price list. And also I can have it in a separate document for you as well. Um, so yeah. But that's basically about it. For next year, we do have a promotion uh, for all of our um, VET courses. Um, it, I think it's $100 discount on the first term. Okay, so if it's originally $1,000, you'll be $900. Okay, um, then yeah, once I get the up, I'm still waiting on our marketing team to give me the updated price list for our vet courses for next year. So uh, once I get that, I will send it to Mark. Um, do we have any questions? I think that's pretty much about it. 
Okay, uh, thanks very much, Vera, uh, for giving us a, a very comprehensive training today. So uh, if you have any further questions uh, in the short future, uh, you can always contact our youth education team first. And uh, if we have anything unclear, uh, we will pass your questions to Vera. Okay, so uh, hope you all have a, a nice day today. And thanks, Vera, again. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. All right. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye.
Thank <laughs> you.